In the 1920s and early 1930s, Greta Mosheim was one of the biggest film stars in Germany. She appeared in a number of films, but when Hitler came to power, being Jewish, she had to flee the country and then was absent for nearly 20 years. Margarita Emma Dorothea Mosheim was born on the 8th of January 1905 in Berlin. The 8th of January is also the birthday of my Patreon supporter, Jonathan, and so I take this opportunity to wish him a happy birthday too. So, happy birthday, Jonathan, and anybody else wants to wish him a happy birthday, please put it down in the comments, and no doubt he will be very happy. Margareta, Greta for short, was the daughter of Dr. Marcus Mosheim, 1868 to 1956, and his wife Clara, née Hilger, from 1875 to 1970. After school, Greta studied alongside Marlon Dietrich under Max Reinhardt at the Rijker University of Dramatic Art. She was a member of the Deutsches Theater Berlin from 1922 to 1931, and then she also played at the Lessing Theater, Metropol Theater, Commodian House, and the Volksbühne. Her big break on stage came when Max Reinhardt replaced her for an actress who had become ill with less than 24 hours notice to take part in the play The Monkey Talks. Learning a difficult role in such a short time put her in big demand with other productions. The play became a film in 1927 in the United States. The plot is that of a circus troubled by financial difficulties, which has planned to have an acrobat act as a talking chimpanzee. But then the chimpanzee falls in love with the tightrope walker. Apparently, it's quite a challenging role, not only for Greta, but no doubt also for the chimpanzee having to talk in a silent movie. Greta also appeared in stage musicals. Her songs were released on records. Her songwriters included Friedrich Hollander, amongst others. Friedrich Hollander wrote the satirical song, The Jews Are to Blame, which appears in the film Hitler, The Rise of Evil. You can see it, that part where Hafenstein goes to see his friend who is a, a theatre or cabaret owner, and then that is on stage. The song was written as a joke, but once Hitler came to power, it ceased to be very funny. In 1931, Hollander could poke fun at the Nazis. Fortunately, he had the good luck to get out before they got him. Greta's first role on the big screen was the film Mikael, which was released on the 26th of September 1924. In 1925, she appeared in An Artist of Life and from then on regularly appeared in various types of films, including avant-garde drama, comedies and war films. In September 1927, she was involved in founding her own company, Greta Mosheim Film Productions GmbH. In Germany, she was probably best known for her roles in the historical films Dreyfus in 1930 and York in 1931. In 1930, she made her sound uh, film debut in the moral drama Siam Kali, directed by Hans Titkner, which addresses the subject of abortion. In the following years, Greta had leading roles in various sound films. Her image was that of a modern, cheeky, defiant type of young lady, as we shall see. After the Nazi seizure of power, Greta emigrated to Austria in 1933 and then to the United Kingdom in 1934. In London, she studied English and got to know the language well enough to start in to share a dwelling in 1935. I think her best known early film in the United Kingdom was Car of Dreams, where she starred opposite John Mills. Now, there is a link to this film below, and you can see how well she does in it. I wanted to actually put part of it into this video, but then I got a bit worried about copyright issues. I know there's things like fair use and all the rest of it, but really, I just can't be bothered to argue with YouTube. 
Anyway, uh, Car of Dreams, it was written so many years ago, but I think the film is very fresh uh, with a plot somewhat similar today to a modern romantic comedy. Greta speaks with an accent that's not quite British. If anything, it's more French. And it certainly doesn't sound anything like that of the ladies who play her mother and her sister in the film. But all the same, it's an excellent job, fantastic job for somebody who just arrived as a refugee. And it's also interesting to see John Mills, who is best known, uh, I think, for the, you know, the war films. He did things like Ice Cold in Alex or uh, many others. And to think that the war films which um, projected him, his career, were yet, the war itself was yet to happen. Anyway, back to Greta. In 1938, she went to New York. She did a few theatre appearances there, but she was unable to build on her initial success. She played in New York with the players from abroad, a German language theatre that she co-founded. In 1952, she returned to Germany for the first time and in the following years made guest appearances with theatre productions in various cities. She gave her first guest appearance in Berlin when she played uh, Sally Bowles in John van der Druten's uh, play I Am a Camera, on which the later musical Cabaret is based. So that in itself shows the early days of the Nazis. She also made some appearances on television productions in the 60s and 70s, including the crime sim series Der Commissar, and her last film role was in 1978 as the grandmother in Hank Bohm's youth drama, Moritz, Dear Moritz. Greta Mosheim was honoured in 1963 for her role as Hannah Yelkes in Tennessee Williams' play, The Night of the Iguana, with the Critics' Prize for the Performing Arts. Her sister uh, was the theatre actress, Laura Mosheim, who also had a number of film credits to her name, before being forced to leave Germany by the Nazis. Greta was married three times. Her first husband was the actor Oskar Homolka, and she was with him for nine years. Then she married the railway industrialist Howard Gould, and then she was married to the journalist Robert Cooper, and if I remember correctly, he used to write for The Times. She lived in New York until the end of her life, but often used to go to Germany to appear in on the stage or in films or whatever. In 1984, she was awarded the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany, Germany's highest civilian award. She died of cancer in New York City, on the 29th of December, 1986, aged 81. So, uh, if I might actually just re return for a moment to this film, um, Car of Dreams. And if you see it, there's so many people in it who themselves were uh, refugees from either Nazi Germany or Tsarist Russia. And so this, it's really very uh, impressive uh, people from so many backgrounds coming together in this uh, film and certainly for me as a person who also has a uh, YouTube channel on um, uh, motors uh, then uh, it's an interesting way of doing it. So anyway, if you have the links below should you be at all interested to see the, um, the, the film. So, uh, thanks very much for watching, and this video is slightly different from the normal sort of things I do. I upload every Friday at 8 my time. I'm in Central Europe, uh, so that is 7 in the UK and 11 in Los Angeles, and all sorts of times in other places as well, such as in Australia. It's very early uh, on the Saturday morning, and um, if you... Uh, happen to be when uh, the premiere, I always try to be present for the premiere. It's not always possible for me to be there, but I always try to be at the premiere. So that gives you the opportunity to have a bit of live chat with me. So thanks very much for watching and all the best from me in Poland.